Hi, and welcome everyone to our very first way of nature, nature side chat. In this monthly series of talks and discussion, John Milton, who is a pioneering environmentalist ecologist and a world renowned spiritual leader, will speak to many of his friends and colleagues about the work that they've done with leadership in environment in ecology protecting the primary Amazon rainforest, protecting the Georgia coastline. Um, he will speak uh, with them about how having a deep connection with nature informed and empowered them to make these incredible pioneering changes. Um, John Milton, let me first introduce him first. John Milton is the founder and CEO of Way of Nature. He's a person who has had a deep connection with nature since he was quite young, having done his first uh, vision quest at the tender age of seven. And once he did one, he never stopped. He is a person who has blended very deep traditional lineages of many great traditions of Buddhism, Tibetan Bon Buddhism, Zazen, among Hindu, um, many other traditions. Uh, he has blended that with this very deep and powerful connection with nature. And he is the founder and CEO of Way of Nature, which brings people back into connection with the three natures, their inner nature, outer nature, and true nature. It's his lifelong passion, it's his lifelong goal to be of service to all beings on this earth, humans and non-humans alike. And along with it is his very good friend and colleague, uh, Yaron Genvi. Yaron is the founder of Nature Academy Learning Lab, SOL Sweden, faculty at Executive Education, Stockholm School of Education, and a senior advisor at the Talberg Foundation. He's also a board member at the Stockholm Resilience Center and Escart Foundation. Did I say that right? <laughs> He's an economist, pathfinder, mountain guide by training with deep training with the Sami and Native American elders. As he says, he has a very, also has a very different angle to leadership development and also bringing leaders into deep connection with nature, much like John. So thank you very much for everyone for joining us for our first Nature Side Chat. And now, John, please, I open the floor well, to you. Thank you, Cindy. Good job. Um, <clears throat> One of the great things for me today about having your near together for a little uh, sharing together and exploration of the past is uh, it's not so common to find people who have both a background and deep ways of connecting to nature and who blended that with a, a passion for the spiritual and sacred side of nature at the same time. And I think that was one of the things that brought your and I together way back when. Um, oh, I should also mention that Jorn was one of the original people that got the way of nature Sweden started. And um, so we have to give him a lot of credit for that as well. Um, <clears throat> so Jorn, uh, wonderful to see you here. You're over in Sweden. I'm sitting thank here you. in Bristol, Colorado. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Great to be here. Good to, to spend a little time you. together today. Yeah, thank you. We were, we were chatting about climate change earlier on, and Jorn was mentioning that the uh, they're having temperatures right now in the in the northern zone in Siberia and Scandinavia. That's, I guess, historic high temperatures. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, heat records uh, every day now. Yeah, it's it's a bad sign, and uh, and of course uh, the the COVID. Uh, uh, on top of it makes it tough for people, you know, because we, people want to, to, to seek uh, uh, shadows and, and also some cooling in, in the waters by, by the beaches and so on. It's overcrowded. So now they have guards in, in some of the, uh, the swimming areas 
because people, you know, hmm. they, they're trying to find cold. <laughs> sure. And, and, and get too, too close to each other, of course, on the small spots that are available. So, so it's tough times, actually. And, and yeah. I hope it will be a wake-up call. I hope so, too. <clears throat> yeah. Um, one of the things that I thought would be fun to start with today is how we first uh, began to uh, spend some time together. And I think uh, one of the biggest first times was in Baja, California. Yeah. And uh, so maybe um, yeah. great to hear your, your memories of that time together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, the, it was fantastic. I, I, uh, I, I met Peter Senge in Sweden. Um, uh, he was attending a, a, a small meeting. He was invited as, uh, as well as myself. And um, we met in an in a old uh, uh, Iron Age village, you know, that has uh, been kept and, you know, hmm. you know and, and, um, and he said, he was so excited. He said, Joran, Joran, you have to meet uh, John, John Milton. I said, why? Well, you, you, ha you ha are so much alike when it comes to your passions and ideas and experiences and so. And of course, I had read the book, uh, Presence. It was just fresh. And, and when I read this um, chapter, uh, Seeing with the Heart, uh, the story from Baha, I was already on my way, I will say. But when, when, when Peter Zenge mentioned it so clearly that this was a must, I, I actually, I think I called you and, and you, you were so generous. So you were sending um, CDs, even from the advanced training. <laughs> and, uh, and I started to listen to them. And uh, uh, of course I had mentioned before that, uh, the, the Mantakshi and uh, uh, the shamanistic training and all that. So, so I think you felt safe in a way when you were sending it over. And then I had the chance to come over uh, to Baja in December uh, 2004, I think it was. Hmm. Um, yeah. And um, I was lucky because we were just two people at that time. So we had uh, uh, lots of time to spend together as well. I remember that. Um, and I got spoiled <clears throat> to get the training from you. It was like a private lesson on a ski resort. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and of course, that uh, lots of ideas came up. And from that time, uh, I felt that once I wanted to invite you to, to Europe and to Scandinavia. And so I did. And the year after we, we did the program together in the archipelago. Yeah, I think the first was out, um, what's the name of that area we were working in? Jillinge at Ola's place, remember? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I should mention that Jorn is a very skilled boatman and uh, <laughs> demonstrated his, his skill in skimming through these very shallow interconnected islands in the Stockholm archipelago. Beautiful, beautiful area. Spectacular. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, my, my, um, I had been renting a, a place that you could call it the conference center, a little bit like that on an island <clears throat> or for some years in the archipelago and uh, we did kayaking and we did nature activities there with uh, with leadership trainings and so on and even this executive education from stockholm business school was uh, was the was the target group there so yeah it was fantastic yeah. beautiful and people get so excited when they met you and they remember we had we had pretty wealthy people with lots of experience from, from the business society with us. Yeah. yeah, I was very inspired by the fact that uh, in Scandinavia in general, so many leaders have been able to integrate a love with na of nature and yeah. their work as leaders. And they kind of naturally do what we, we both do for 
as, as a big chunk of our lives, which is to take people back into nature, help them yeah. learn how to reconnect and, uh, and to do that. Yeah. And then to receive the gifts of creativity and opening of the heart that comes from that. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> but, but one person that was with us, he, he's a very famous uh, businessman, uh, founder of a big, big international company. And he had a summer house just beside where we were, not just beside, but not far from it. He had spent all his life in, in the archipelago, being in nature, but had never come in connection to nature as after mm -hmm. this. So he was amazed. He was so touched by heart. So, I mean, they, even though they, they spend time, they haven't got that deep, deep connection. Very true. I think one of the things that has really uh, surprised me over the years is how many people uh, maybe growing up as a <clears throat> doing fishing or hunting or camping, doing some trips with friends. And um, of course, these are wonderful and can be very powerful ways of connecting. But when you bring in the uh, two things, which is the, the power of solitude, being alone in nature without human culture to constantly reinforce who you are and what you are and what nature is. Yeah. You don't have to give it a lot of names. And then you combine that with uh, beginning to open a sacred view of nature as being part of a, the unfoldment of an immense mystery. And you're a part of that mystery and it's unfolding. And to be able to enter into that kind of experience with nature for a farmer or a fisherman um, or for somebody involved with forestry or mining, even though they think they know the earth and the land and nature well. Definitely. This is the process that we've been working with over the years and developing is completely opens the eyes to a brand new experience. And of course, when you take people from in the city who've had not much experience with deeper connections with outer nature, the uh, what opens through the kind of processes we've been developing is really profound. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and uh, and it's also what what we have seen, uh, as you saw when you you have been visiting a couple of times the archipelago. There is lots of Called, called summer houses uh, out there. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, one of the most beautiful areas you can find on the planet, mm -hmm. in a way, if you like uh, that kind of, of nature, of course. But uh, so um, because we have also lots, many weeks of vacation by law in Sweden, even the, the executives take four, five, six weeks. Perhaps they have their family out for all summer and they spend a lot of time in nature, actually. So that's, that's if I, sometimes I call it, it's, it's, we, we got nature in our mother's milk in, in Scandinavia, especially in Sweden, where we have this access to nature, even on private land, mm. uh, in, a, in a way where most, most countries doesn't do, you know, they, they don't give that freedom, but we have it. So... But it's the, the, the missing link is actually the guiding into that field that you was just mentioning, I think. Yeah, yeah I think that uh, that was another thing that I think brought us together in work because of when you did your passage in Baja, I think you saw that we had a very strong common mm -hmm. ground there mm -hmm. in uh, developing ways of helping people reconnect because for most people these days, they've they've lost or forgotten that connection with nature, which I think most people instinctively know there's something really powerful and profound there. But if you live most of your life in a city and you've not had much chance to get into the wild, mm -hmm. uh, your connection is maybe to a, a city park or a favorite tree or a bed of flowers, which is great. But the experience of emerging, emerging yourself in a completely uh, natural and wild environment is, a, is quite something else again. Yeah, and so we've both been working on ways to help people yeah. have a taste of that if they've been separated from that for a while. Yeah. And uh, we yeah. kind of pioneered some of that work together in um, yeah. things like that program in the archipelago. Yeah. What I saw when I met you that you had a structure that I've been longing for or looking for. Uh, mm. My 
my background as a mountain guide, when I was a teenager, late teenager, I was working on this uh, uh, pretty fancy, you could call it uh, a mountain lodge, uh, where we had lots of decision makers as, as uh, our guests. And uh, one, the wake up for me, or vis when the vision came, what I wanted to do with my life was actually when, you know, you're walking in, in for, for hours, five, six hours, actually to bring the people to the best spots, to meet a flower, to meet a, a beautiful view, to open the senses and perceptions and, and, you know, to relax in nature. That was my job. But when we were laying on our backs and this very famous uh, CEO laying in the, on his back and looking at the clouds just beside me and he said, this is the way I would like to feel when I make decisions. And then I started to ask, what do you mean? <laughs> what, what's happening? And he said, I, I get connected to, to a deeper source the part of me that are most uh, authentic, the part of me that I like most, but I'm so seldom connected with in my busy life. Yeah. So that was what took me, uh, you know, looking for, for ways to do this. And uh, actually the vision was, what if I, I once in my life could uh, bring decision makers into that spot, that inner place, where from where the best decisions for all life can be taken beautiful yeah so uh, <clears throat> it was interesting we began doing some of these joint programs together in sweden and uh, building on that passion mutual passion mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> then when you said john there's a group that i'm starting to do some work with and i think it'd be great if we could Work together with this this group up in central Sweden. <laughs> they're, they're doing programs in a place where an ancient uh, meteor, many millions of years ago, I guess, came crashing into the earth, blasted a gigantic crater into the earth, and then the water came in and filled that crater with, in that blasted area, with a beautiful lake, Siljan. Lake Siljan. That's Siljan. right. Siljan. Yeah. Siljan. And, um, I think both Jorn and I feel that the, the impact of that crater left a very powerful kind of energetic imprint behind, which we can all feel when we go there. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was quite auspicious that the Talbot Forum began to uh, locate themselves there for their gatherings. Yeah. And uh, this group, uh, well, you can probably elaborate much better than I, Jorn, because you've worked as a yeah. staff part of the core group of, of Tauberg. But the thing that impressed me was that here's a group of people that had a passion for coming up with an ecological and environmental sustainability focus for the earth and for the protection of uh, the planet. That was the complement to the big economic gatherings at Davos. And, um, but here was a gathering of those that were not just concerned about the economy of the economies of humans, but uh, how humans could live as good partners with the rest of life on, on planet Earth in a sustainable way. Yeah. And so uh, for us to be invited into working with them to provide a way to take this, uh, this process of nature activity that we've been working on uh, to the topic forum and provide it in a very short period of time. Uh, this is a big deal in terms of having a gathering of sometimes between one and 2,000 people. Yeah. Uh, so we had to be very precise in how this uh, training occurred. Joran uh, came, came up with a wonderful term, Pathfinder, yeah. which uh, was the name for the, uh, those that were trained to take smaller groups. So if you've got several thousand people, obviously you have to break that down into smaller units. And then those smaller units are led by a Pathfinder. And so the pathfinder needs to be trained in how to take people out and how they can then become a connector of uh, inner, outer, and true nature aspects. And uh, so this is the amazing thing that happened at Talbrick. Not only was it a, a kind of a Davos for the environment and for the planet, 
but it was also willing to take that that dive into a, what was really a pretty unique idea of taking people out in the woods and leaving them there alone for a short period of time and instead of a week, uh, maybe a half a day, or in some cases a full day and a night, um, with the help of a well-trained uh, guide or pathfinder. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty radical stuff. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it was a fantastic um, innovation, I will call it. F founded by the former uh, st strategist of Volvo cars, and he, Wekman, and he felt that he, he um, the people that was trying, I, I mean, Volvo is a big deal for Sweden, but they were only uh, speaking with, or talking to people in the area of automobiles or oil or, you know, that kind of infrastructure. So he, he wanted to create a meeting outside Volvo, but where you bring people from all, all uh, angles of, of society uh, and discuss how on earth can we live together. That was the main uh, theme. The main this right. year. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and then he was using art, music and nature as, as, um, as the colors, so to speak. And, and, um, and we were, we were not, it was not <laughs> allowed to, to, to have long talks from, uh, you know, to the audience, it was about dialoguing. And the thing was that um, uh, when I was asked actually to, to, to do this, I, had, I did the thing with a smaller group when it was a similar situation. Uh, this was 2005 or something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it was uh, fires in uh, California and it was fires in uh, the Amazon and we we had to discuss in this group what what can we do what's going on and and i took them out and and let the people sit and and reflect in connection with nature small uh, by one by one actually and uh, when they came back there was a completely uh, other uh, dialogue that came out of that so so boo said in the morning after actually at breakfast he said Jan and I want to sit alone with you and have a chat. And I thought, wow, now, now I'm finished. This was too much. <laughs> and then he was kind of like this and said, what we did yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. I said, I want you to open up, uh, that we open up the whole uh, forum uh, next year with this. And that was at that time, 600 people. I said, impossible. How is that? How, how, how should that? Well, we do it. We do it. No problem. Okay, so that was actually something you figure it out, he said. <laughs> and then I, I was, uh, we were kind of trying to find ways, and, and I was talking to Jan, what, what is the, the, the most important part actually to open up? But if we only have a couple of hours in the beginning of the meeting, uh, what the practice or um, tools can we give this, the audience? And what we felt was actually and uh, agreed upon is very much uh, the, the um, perception fields. Yeah. That, so, so the parts of, of the training that you, you give and also um, and of the, the part of, of the, dev the development chain for a person when you really scope, uh, are going to open up for, for, for nature and for... Um, for actually the three natures, that's that's the whole thing, and um, what we it was a big success. Uh, everybody was a bit uh, nervous, of course, because this is not the regular way of opening a, a big international yep. meeting with <laughs> with presidents and kings and and guards most, and <laughs> exactly. Most people were used to getting some. Some very skillful blah blah blah, but uh, here they're getting pure, pure experience of connection yeah. without a lot of blah blah blah. Yeah, and uh, I think yeah. there's a bit of a jolt for people. Yeah, <laughs> space uh, and silence, uh, stillness. That was fantastic. 
And the thing was, <clears throat> I think it was the uh, after the first or second year, some then when uh, Buekman was over in in US and he was invited one of the pro professors uh, in Yale University. Mm -hmm. That professor was bringing together uh, some of his colleagues and they were sitting and should talk about his experience from what they thought, what happened at the Telby Forum and what was discussed. And he started and said, it was one of my strongest experience ever. Yeah. And what, they said. Well, you know, I recognized I'm 63 years yeah. old. I have never been alone in nature before. This was the first time. And then he started to describe his, his deep experience of, of connection with himself and, and nature. And it was not the topics they were discussing he was referring to. It was actually his own uh, experience. And that was yep. recorded of, uh, from, from your uh, friend uh, that had this radio show, remember? Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Cheryl, Cheryl. Cheryl. So she did the uh, interview with Boo and he was referring yeah, to that. Some very fine interviews with Boo. Yeah. And with Peter. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so, but what I, what I could say, we, what we also did was we did uh, Night in Nature, where we let people yeah, stay no. just under the stars by themselves. At, at that beautiful little island that uh, yeah. to take yeah. a boat over and into this volcanic lake and yeah and then camp there with a little bonfire yeah. but yeah. also on that hill where we have the wolf pack you know remember the first uh, one of the two two actually two years we 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 did that up there on the hills yeah so there was and and that was the same thing when remind people, me of the wolf pack mm -hmm, uh, that was actually a, a uh, area where the the wolves was uh, they had their their area there, so um, but we didn't meet them and we were we were listening for the holes but we didn't hear them. But so they, they had their den, dens there and they would often hunt and howl there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite a first place if you've been a city kid, and then you come out and you do your first uh, nature quest <laughs> around a wolf pack. Yeah. We put a quite a shift of gears. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, but but the thing with also with the with the Pathfinder training was also there was a couple of things. First of all, what we did was we had strong discipline. We we made it. Um, e I will not say easy to handle, but we tried to make it so so easy as possible for so every person that was a pathfinder or could be a pathfinder they could find their own personal way of, of giving the the guidance yes the some guidance. unique gifts yeah that yeah could be exactly built. but we were following pretty much the the way the fields of perception structure that you have created actually yeah and um uh, and the, and the, they they had to practice at home we did uh, like three three whole days and then they should practice with groups at home and then because we wanted them to be feel very safe when they met people s s staying in front of people that were a little bit uneasy perhaps yeah, with, with this because they were not there and i think that was part of of the success uh, because we had this kind of well-trained pathfinders as well yeah they didn't just have the the training itself of, about the principles and the core practices, but also working with some groups, small groups, yeah, to get yeah. a feeling for what that means and the kinds of questions that come up. Um, yeah. And for the most part, most of the sol solitary time was relatively short, three to five hours, as I recall. Yeah. And the preparatory time in the component which was uh, again usually around a two to three hour a check yeah. of them and then there was some time to come back together again after the the alone experience and uh, and do a bit of sharing yeah By the way that we've, we've come to call that the uh, the way of nature you yeah 
Yeah. As uh, there's the preparatory period. Yeah. The uh, deep drop into connection with the inner, outer, and true nature. And then there's coming back and integrating that experience with the support of, a, of others in the spiritual community and beginning to learn how to bring that into the outer world and also begin to stabilize the creativity that has come up as a result of the process. Yeah. As, as we both know, you're in the, the creativity that's tapped into as you begin to approach source or true nature, especially uh, as you, you don't have to be established in your true nature, but even the journey close to arriving at true nature begins to bring up a huge upwelling of immense creativity, which of course to leaders and uh, heads of different organizations, that's pure gold. Yeah, pure gold. And it can be refined into it yeah. from 18 karat to 24 if you yeah. really have the right practices and processes to refine with. And that's, yeah. of course, a lot of what people who might go through in a, a short initial program like this, then hopefully they will come back and, and take a journey with uh, some of our programs that take people deeper. Yeah. So that gold goes from 18 karat to 24 and uh, becomes very pure gold. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's uh, definitely so. Uh, uh, I have also seen that uh, uh, you know, innovation is 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 the new big thing. Everybody's talking about innovate and transform and and uh, regenerativity and yeah, Generate. <laughs> yeah, regenerate. We go through these words from environment to sustainability to uh, renewal to regeneration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Regeneration that's its own cycle of words. <laughs> yeah. And the, the interesting thing is, of course, that um, there is a language trying to capture what what nature is all about. And uh, and finally, I think even in, in business language or leadership language, we, we're coming closer and closer and closer. What has happened, at least in Scandinavia and, and perhaps Northern Europe um, now, is that um, there is... Um, raising understanding and awareness about uh, some call it a mind shift um, some call it um, uh, growth that matters uh, um, some call it and this is the really tough ones is called um, uh, um, beyond sustainability um, beyond sense making, and when, uh, when you go into that field, it's also beyond words. Yeah, and of course, that's essentially the same as what we've been referring to as true nature. Yeah, and when you hear, as I uh, just a month ago, or a little bit more than a month ago, we had a big uh. Um, Zoom call uh, with the uh, Stockholm um, Stockholm School of of uh, Business School was actually inviting with the uh, KE, which is the um, one of the leading uh, academias here in Sweden, and we had people like Peter Senge and Otto Sharma and others also from from Harvard uh, that were discussing uh, what how can we mature as society, how can we mature as adults? And uh, we are, I will say that academia are coming closer and closer now towards what we are talking about, uh, the old wisdom traditions. Um, so I think also there is a, a raising awareness about if we are going to make it as a collective, we have to come up to another level as a collective yeah. and and then how do we do that and you and i know i will say that we know that we have to reconnect to nature again yeah it's interesting um, in a way the covid uh, crisis and the um, racial discrimination uh, upwelling going on right now i think are both uh, reminders that we have an invitation from uh, from the circumstances that the planet has provided us right now 
to take a much deeper dive into a much more fundamental kind of truth that most indigenous peoples have already had. Yeah. Most indigenous peoples do a nature quest or a sacred passage or a, a way of nature, nature academy type of process. And that process bonds them very deeply to the rest of life and being having the experience of being part of the family or the community of life as a system. And then, of course, when you have that relationship, you have the love and the appreciation and the respect and the honoring and most of all, the motivation to begin behaving as a, as yeah. a responsible member of a big family of life. Yeah. All indigenous cultures have that. And the root of uh, that behavior is the experience, not just the knowledge, but the experience of deep, deep nature connectivity to the outer nature, the inner nature, and the true nature that underlies both. Yeah. So... Uh, the um, we have a lot we can learn. I think one of the things that I've done over the years is to try to live and study with many indigenous cultures around the world and then learn from them. And then from that process of, of deep immersion, begin to see what is the common ground of their, their, their process to help mm -hmm. bond people more deeply mm -hmm. with those three natures, outer, inner, and true. Yeah. Now, what is the common ground? And then most of the, the training that we utilized in Tauberic, for example, came from just the observation of what was the common ground of these many cultures that had some sort of, of deep connection to wild nature. And when you have that common ground, you're likely to have principles that can be integrated or accepted by virtually any, any people, any culture, any individual, because it's a common ground level. Yeah. And the other benefit is that instead of fighting about who's got the best way, best process, you begin to see that each culture has a way that has a common ground with your way. Mm -hmm. And instead of fighting about who's got the best way, you can celebrate these beautiful multiple pathways into, into truth. Yeah. And uh, so this, it helps to eliminate the need to fight among cultures about who's got the best pathway, especially spiritually. Definitely. And, so it's, I think this is a little background to, again, a little deeper level of what we've been up to. Then, of course, the, the main thing there, too, is that when you make that dive into creativity, into the pure creativity of source or true nature, what comes up is a kind of creativity if you engage in the, in the type of processes we've been in, helping develop. The type of creativity that comes up is deeply nature-connected, mm. which means it's a creativity that helps uh, come up with a creativity that provides answers to many of the imbalance mm. challenges that we have between humans and, and the rest of the earth. And the creativity is very precisely aimed at the kind of creativity that will help resolve many of these issues of imbalance, disharmony, and uh, lack, of a, lack of understanding how to come into a kind of symbiotic relationship with our ecosystem and our biosphere. So uh, yeah, definitely. Amazing. I've, I've seen a couple of things uh, that I just want to mention. We have had a couple, actually many years of, of programs up in the Sami country. Mm -hmm. And the Samis, I will say, as you know, they're very close friends up there. Uh, and, and I can see they have it imprinted in their DNA and they're still working with it from it, following it, which is actually, they are part of the landscape. They, 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 uh, the gratitude, they, they giving thanks, you know, they're asking permissions, even if they are, when they are, uh, are, are making coffee and making a fire, you know, and they are giving the first sip to, to, to the, the spirits there, you know, because of, uh, because of, of, I will say, not only tradition, it's about uh, uh, surviving on a very rough place on the earth where, where yeah. you need to play by the the possibilities so it's evolution that have made them or brought them to where they are and they are still doing it because they it feels right and so so i think that's that's one thing which is uh, it's also a very very good thing to bring people to that kind of places and uh, uh, you yes. remember when we of course uh, have worked many times with raider and his wife Kirsten, uh, who are Samis living not far yeah. from her town, 
and uh, bringing them to have a chance to share with uh, with our Sami friends and get a taste of what it is to um, immerse in the indigenous wisdom, which is so ecologically coherent, mm -hmm. which we really are struggling to find a way to to recover in, in modern, what I like to call techno-urbano industrial culture. Yeah. And, uh, but the but, people like the what? Sami have to have, have have taken that dive into deep connectivity with the rest of life. And so the lessons that they they hold, especially for the peoples that are living in the uh, northern Scandinavian environments, where they they specialized in a very precise deep wisdom of that kind of ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, extremely important for modern cultures to pay attention to and learn from, especially yeah. those living in Scandinavian areas. But what I remember that you have mentioned many, many times, you have been kind of, you know, you're saying that bioregions is the thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and of course, as, you, as we, if, if we see ourselves as a big family wandering out from Africa many hundreds of thousands of years ago or earlier than that, and then we, we in this sweet spot of 10,000 years when, when it was possible to to walk towards uh, the Greenland or, 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 you know, all the ways that, that man has traveled and find a way to survive with that uh, bioregion bio and, and created a culture uh, adapted to that possibilities. That is also a very, lots of lessons to learn from, from how you can adapt. True. Uh, yeah, but as you say, the, the, the common understanding of uh, on a spiritual level which and we have forgotten it we have uh, been pretty I mean we, we, have, tried, we have been seeking um, truth on other places than, <laughs> we, than where we are living and, and I think that's also why it's, it's much more um, interests shown I can see from uh, even uh, even academia now uh, mm -hmm. what the uh, uh, indigenous culture has to offer and I have also seen a, a much more openness amongst for example leaders when when yeah. we talk about spirituality if you look at the uh, at the diversity of the planet and uh, if you were trying to I don't I don't remember ever seeing a report that tries to account for the tremendous biodiversity of human uh, indigenous cultures around the planet. But if you were to do something like that, what you would find is virtually every indigenous culture created a culture that is um, harmonious with its, with the, the ecosystem that it is part of. And, and of course the vision questing, nature questing type of process that each of these cultures engages in is the key to the connectivity at which the, the creative response comes to learn how to live in harmony with that ecosystem. And uh, most indigenous cultures look on themselves as growing up out of nature, as a part of nature's body, yeah. not descending into the, into the planet from some realm out there, but growing up literally from the earth, very grounded, very, 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 based in the whole system of life of which they are a part. And then of course, when you have that type of connection, you naturally want to live in a symbiotic way. A symbiotic symbiosis means collaborative. Uh, most of us with an ecological studies background like myself, uh, over the years I've come to realize that 90% of the behavior of the species within an ecosystem is based on mechanisms for collaboration, cooperation, and symbiotic behavior yeah. that forms the overall health of the living system, the living yeah. eco ecosystem. And there is that 10% of competitive uh, refinement that takes place, but it's in the context of that overall symbiotic behavior. So the, even the competition is part of the symbiosis, if you look at it a little more deeply. Mm -hmm. Some of the studies in Yellowstone on wolf predation and how that helps to maintain the health of the, the forests yeah. and the environment, for example, is a good, a good example of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So really the challenge now is to, within each of the ecosystems of the planet, not only to understand their, them from a scientific standpoint of the energy flows 
in the way in which the life forms there uh, remain in balance, but also to begin to honor and appreciate and tap into this unique wisdoms of this of the ecological indigenous cultures that had the ecological wisdom that we're very much in danger of losing as these cultures are impacted by um, all the pressures of the modern world, mm -hmm. including things like the COVID virus. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so in a way, that's part of the challenge is to save this indigenous wisdom of the local and huge display of ecosystems around the planet so that we learn this unique, specific lessons of each ecosystem that are the lessons that have been learned over thousands of years by the indigenous cultures of these places. And we barely pay attention to it in terms yeah. of modern conserving yeah. culture, or we popularize it in some ridiculous way like a cartoon. Yeah. And uh, this is not the way to go. So the only answer is that, combined with, I believe, having a process of uh, designing a way to get people out through the kind of thing that we've been working on over the years, where everyone, every young woman, or every young man has the opportunity, especially in their teenage years, to go through a rite of passage in their local ecosystem to begin to take the, have that experience of bonding through sight and sound and taste and smell and touch and movement and balance and the experience of their energy body and through the life of their emotions and mind, all of which bond them deeply or can bind them deeply with nature. They just have the opportunity to go out in solitude with some guidance like the Pathfinders have provided to Tomberg. This could be done. It would not be, uh, I mean, it, it would be a relatively straightforward thing to put together a program like this that would serve the planetary reconnectivity. Yeah to all of the diverse ecosystems of the planet. And out of that process, I think both you and I know a huge amount of wisdom and uh, creativity would come of how to redirect our culture back into balance and harmony and a much more integrated state. Mm. Uh, one last thing, uh, you know, I was listening to Greta Thunberg's, uh, one of her last uh, sharings. You sent yeah. along a little video of one of her last uh, sharings that she gave. I've been a big fan of what she's been doing to try to wake us up. And of course, her main message has been, don't think so much about me. Pay attention to the science. Yeah. Pay attention yeah. to the science of climate change and damage. Yeah. That's all I ask. And here's the best science that we've got through these, these uh, studies that have come out of the UN. Uh, let's pay attention to these and, and begin to shift our policies in that direction. Yeah. And I think she's absolutely right on with that. And I would say the companion to that initiative could be a campaign to help support leaders and young people, especially, but all people ideally, mm -hmm. to make a deep reconnection with nature through these simple uh, processes of the things like the Nature Quest, the Sacred Passage, these processes in the Nature Academy and the way nature have uh, assembled over the years, which very simply, allow people to reconnect. And from that reconnection, they have the motivation to do what Greta is talking about, to want to go back to the science, to want to go back to living a, a life of true balance, integration and harmony and, and deep respect for our fellow members of life from the other species and the other populations that make up the planet. Mm. So uh, this aspect of the indigenous cultures like the Sami is very important. Mm. and uh, gives us some guidelines for, you might say, an invitation that's almost there on the table for us now to pick up, to take what we've learned. And the Talberg Forum, one of the things that really excited me about the forum and the work with them that we've been, been talking about here is that I think the largest group that I'm aware of that was introduced to this pro the, the connection process was close to a, thousand, a couple thousand people. Yeah. That's now true. think about that. A couple thousand people at one time, with the help of the Pathfinders and these, these guys that are trained in the process, go out and then support the transformation of a couple thousand people, who then come back and say, this was one of the most powerful, most profound experiences of this entire gathering on sustainability. This was the one thing that really made a difference, and that yeah. I will remember, and it helped to transform my life. Now imagine that happening on a much larger planetary basis. Yeah. 
it proves the point that this can be done. It's not that complicated. We know how to do this. Yeah. You bring together authentic teachings, bring together the power of uh, a special place, a wild place in nature. You bring together uh, the capacity to be in solitude where you're disconnected from normal human uh, reminders of just being a, a regular member of a culture, but instead you're suddenly just a, a naked and open being with nature as your partner. And you yeah. begin to see a different relationship. And then you come back in a spiritual community to share what you've been through and uh, bring out some of the creativity that's come up from touching very deeply into your true nature aspect as well. Mm. So now all of these things are can be done tomorrow. And okay. they certainly can be done over the period of a year or two if we took the time to train people to act, serve as guides to go out and do this kind of thing and to support much broader uh, transformation of, a, again, a, pardon my coining this word, modern, urbano, techno, <laughs> industrial hominids. <laughs> but um, I mean, that's the truth that we're mostly urban, urbanized from an industrial cultural background with a highly technological focus in our lives these days. I mean, we're using it right now. Yeah. And, uh, so that's the reality. How do we move from, from that kind of human into humans that are deeply and profoundly connected like the indigenous peoples are and have been? Yeah. It can be done. And mm. I happen to have some of the keys to the kingdom of how that's done. Yeah. So that's the invitation on the table to the culture. I think this is great. I think this is uh, this is the message uh, today. I hope <laughs> because what you have what you have started, uh, th thanks to I must say to Corona, <laughs> COVID is actually to yeah. to start to to develop these podcasts that you have done. Yep. And, and the training, the online training, and this series that starts now, yep. and I think this is a of course the first step and then if we can find ways and develop ways to to bring people also out in 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 the direct con connection that let's let's do that let's find ways to do that i think that's the next step because everything yeah. else has been done we've laid the foundation for how yeah. to do it how to do it with large numbers of people how to yeah. train the guides and the pathfinders to yeah. facilitate the process and now we even have a lot of the teachings uh, in the process of being recorded yeah. So it doesn't require you or me to be there in person necessarily. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, maybe a little funding might help to get that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> as always, <laughs> that's the key. No, but I think also um, proof of concept is also yeah. something you're, you're asking for when you put should put money into on onto the table for uh, for a test or for. But now we have tested it. It's, we it's, have it. We, it's concept has been proved. And that we know it, it works and we have um, uh, good allies with yeah. us. Uh, so, um, um, but um, um, what I would like to f see is also um, um, your own experience when it comes to the, uh, what do you call it? The ah, is that A or? When people, when they got it, when the, because you have met many, many CEOs or top leaders, different top leaders. What, what, what's, what's happening? What is it, the spark? You know, it's interesting in many of the, uh, the traditions of Asia, uh, one of the ones that I've studied in fairly deeply is one called Dzogchen. It comes out of, it's largely been identified with the Tibetan, uh, Bunpo, which is the indigenous culture of Tibet, and uh, the Nyingma, which is the ancient ones or the old uh, Buddhist tradition of Tibet, and uh, very much associated with the Guru Rinpoche Padmasambhava. But in that, in those traditions, the uh, there's one uh, symbol, which is a when you write it in in Western uh, linguistic way, is A H. Ah. Uh, ah. Huh. That ah uh, represents the. I mean, for us, we we look on ah uh, uh, as ah, uh, right? Or ah, uh, or oh ah. Uh. 
<laughs> so it's it's it represents an opening of space. Ah. An opening of uh, a kind of uh, spacious and luminous and vast and silent and uh, deeply quiet and tranquil state. Mm. And in that sense, it refers to the fundamental level of our true nature, which is one of deep stillness of everything physical, deep silence of everything mental, and deep openness of the true nature of our, our inner, innermost being. And of course, in that vastness, which is essentially indestructible because it's the foundation of, of all life itself, all living things are, have that at their foundation, including us. But when that's touched into, of course, that's the well of creativity, the, the well out of which all this cre creative response comes from. And uh, so the little word, ah, or the, the, the verbal uh, symbol, ah, mm. Mm presents that opening into one's true nature. Mm. The potential of each one of us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great stuff. Mm. Well, uh, wonderful sharing your... Um, Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you for leaping electronically across the, across the oceans and uh, continents together with me today like this. Uh, Great fun. I'm blessed. I'm honored. That's fantastic. Fantastic to see you. You 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 look so. Uh, it's lots of energy, lots of spirit. It's lots oh, of uh, the, the peaceful warrior. It's all the haircut. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me a couple of days ago with the hair out like this. I've been sequestered for more, four months. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to thank both of you for being here today for our first nature side chat with Way of Nature. It was a really beautiful sharing and a lot of very incredibly pertinent uh, topics touched on for our environment, for our life here on this planet, in this universe. So thank you so much for your sharings today. Thank you, Sandy. And I, I should probably mention that uh, they can reach our Way of Nature group here in this uh, at wayofnature.com and then urine, you can reach uh, urine through the, the Nature Academy and also as well as Way of Nature Sweden, yeah. which uh, both have websites. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, as John said, if you'd like to know more about Way of Nature, please check out our website, wayofnature.com. And urine, what is your website? natureacademy.se Okay, thank you so much, and both of you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Come back and visit soon. Yeah, we're longing, longing. And whenever the things uh, lighten yeah. up a little bit. <laughs>